So there's concrete proof. I said audio clips. Um, I appreciate that. And I'll turn now to Mr. Brock for five minutes. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you, uh, witness, for your attendance today. Thank you for your courage and bravery in coming forward and exposing the systemic corruption with this failed liberal government. Canadians, thank you. I personally thank you. Now, I want to start by focusing in on lies. You referenced George Chahal, either lying directly to you or lying to Canadians, Liberal MP from Calgary. You've also made claims that Minister Champagne has deliberately misled, or in your words, lied to Canadians and lied to committee. You referenced in a recent post that there was an egregious cover-up over allegations of mismanagement and misconduct by SDTC. In essence, your position is that the minister and his office softened the final report of an investigation into governance and conflicts of interest at SDTC to protect, in essence, to protect Justin Trudeau's hand-picked conflicted chair, Annette Versheeren. So I take it that you're referencing two avenues of deliberate deceit by Minister Champagne. One in relation to the report when it was received and your allegation, sir, that it was manipulated or in your words, softened, and actually the timing by which he shared the news with Canadians that he took action. Am I accurate in that assessment? You're accurate. And I would, um, you know, I'd mentioned that there's a lot of public interest in this um, current parliamentary session with the potential of a vote of no confidence. And I would say that the real vote of no confidence against the Liberal Party happened when the Auditor General made a decision to intervene because the Auditor General was the one that actually referenced the situation to PCO. And I said, because the AG's office thought that this was a very simple situation to address. Sure. And when the I said minister decided to not act, that is when the AG's office intervened. That in itself is a bigger vote of no confidence against the government than anything else. Sure. And Minister Champagne has proudly on numerous occasions talked about how efficiently he acted, displaying transparency and accountability to Canadians. You're claiming the complete opposite, that he mis mis took the report, uh, manipulated the report, softened the language, and then delayed doing anything to protect the insiders that we're currently governing SDTC. Is that correct? Well, yeah, it's correct. It's um, any ruling party would not want this on their plate. So there is an obvious reason for why nothing happened. Okay, but so I've stopped right there. With respect to the uh, 37 hours of recordings with the assistant deputy minister, correct me if I'm wrong, the chain of command with respect to communication at that level. The assistant deputy minister reports to the deputy minister of I said, who then reports to Minister Champagne. Is that correct? Correct. And you shared months and months of concerns, 300 pages of concerns laid out regarding allegations of mismanagement and human resource issues, you shared that, you shared that with the ADM, and I'm now telling you that likely the ADM most assuredly transferred that knowledge to the Deputy Minister, who transferred that knowledge to Minister Champagne, and no one did anything until the fall of 2023. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Thank oh, you. I, my apologies. I do. My apologies, Chair. I have 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds. Would you table, sir, you referenced the 37 hours of transcripts of the I said conversations with the ADM. Will you table those transcripts with this committee, please? Sure. Thank you. Them.
Those are the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Yip, you have the floor for five minutes. Um, thank you, Chair. And thank you to the witness for bravely coming forward. Um, I'd like to uh, go back to some of Mr. Brock's references here about um, implying that the minister manipulated uh, the ruse or slowed down the findings and so forth. What evidence is there that he did that, the minister? Um, multiple recordings that provide evidence that the ADM and the deputy minister had actually given the minister and the minister's office updates as to what was happening at SDTC and the findings, whereas the minister himself had publicly stated that he had no idea what was going on between March and the end of September. On top of that, there's even audio evidence that at the end of the reporting period, at which point the final recommendation was made to the minister, their reports and information were actually given to the minister verbally, at which point he asked for changes to the report and recommendations before it was officially registered. So, so there's concrete proof? I said audio clips. Um, I'd like to go back to following up Ms. Uh, Bradford's um, comment about um, how she had a hard time uh, squaring your testimony with the conclusions of the McCarthy Review. There are clear conclusions, 62 interviews with 3,000 pages of documents that differ from your view. How can you explain this discrepancy? As I mentioned before, I would ask for you to give me an example of an organization that gets shut down that had a good culture. But I would also, again, mention other aspects of the McCarthy Review. At a certain point, they only had negative testimony, at which point they went out of their way to ask other employees to testify for this report. I don't think that's a regular occurrence where the lawyers are going to other employees to ask for testimony in the positive side. I would also mention again, you know, like what other aspect, if the McCarthy Tetra report is actually true, why don't they release the report instead of seven slides with random statements? If they truly say that they've looked into these situations, why is there no public proof that they did? And why is there no public proof that they have actual evidence that go against these statements. Just because a lawyer or a law firm says that these statements are incorrect, if they're not providing evidence, how are you attacking me saying that the culture is good when the evidence isn't actually there? Did the other 20 whistleblowers also participate in the review? I would assume so, but a lot of them as I said, weren't even interviewed, but I know for a fact that the ones that needed to be interviewed were interviewed. So, again, maybe I'll ask this for the minister. Why doesn't he actually get rid of everyone's NDA and everyone can hear the stories themselves? Because as of right now, the NDAs are off. So, if you are so obsessed with disproving my claim, take off everyone's NDAs and let the public find out exactly what happened. The review noted that, quote, while participants use terminology such as harassment and bullying to describe executive treatment of employees in the workplace, that was in the minority. And the few examples that were offered as evidence revealed more of a discomfort with the direct style of leadership and or disagreement with decisions made by leadership than actual harassment or bullying. They have found no examples of executives yelling or swearing, verbally abusing, or physically threatening employees, end quote. So how uh, should we um, square that with your testimony? As I said, release the transcript that exists for all of these interviews. They took notes. If McCarthy Tetro is saying they did all of this and they have evidence to be contrary to what everyone says, I would happily accept their findings if they actually release anything substantive. 
uh, the, how much time? You, very brief, about eight seconds. Okay, well, I'll let it. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Uh, beginning our third round, it is my intention to get through uh, a third and fourth round. Uh, Mr. Cooper, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, you stated uh, in your testimony that the minister lied. Uh, when he said he was first briefed about the RCGT fact-finding report. At committee, the minister was very clear that he first learned about wrongdoing, conflicts, and mismanagement at SDTC. Uh, but that would not be correct, would it? Probably not. Again, what did George Shahal say to him? You have to ask him. You referenced that there was an interim... RCGT report that contained uh, many of the findings that ultimately made its way into the RCGT report that was issued in October. The interim report was uh, written in May and that the department was going to undertake uh, or establish a directorate to undertake a series of investigations. Uh, I presume the minister would have been briefed in or around May about that interim RCGT report. Is that correct? Correct. And the recordings showed that the deputy minister and the ADM had plans to speak to the minister around the findings, at which point the following week, everything suddenly changed, and now they needed more time and expansion of timing. I would say I myself was personally given the full verbal debrief by RCGT over a two-hour period on exactly what the findings were at that point. So, again, I, I think I maybe want to mention that the 37 hours that I'm talking about, this isn't, they integrated me into every aspect of the investigation. I don't know why, but they did. Yeah. Okay. So the information I'm providing, okay. I'm factually telling the truth well, because it's well, all thank validated. you, thank you. Because the minister never mentioned anything about an interim report. He never mentioned anything about being briefed in May or June. He led... A parliamentary committee to believe that he first learned about the findings of wrongdoing in September, uh, and you said a year ago or nearly a year ago that he lied, and I presume it was in that context that you said he lied. Is that correct? At that part, and the part about the fact that he said he had no, um, you know, no say in that final recommendation, but again, there's evidence to the contrary showing that before he was actually given the recommendation. Him and his office had actual verbal conversations with the ADM and the deputy minister to ask for changes on those reports and the recommendation prior to its official submission. And I would also say that the most indicative aspect of the situation that I said and the cover-up is the fact that the deputy minister is actually retiring. So, uh, in short, the minister was in the thick of it. He was actively involved. Uh, he was learning about information around wrongdoing. He was being briefed, and he was actively, uh, along with his deputy minister, involved in saying, we want to change this, we want to change that, we want to soften the report throughout until it was released uh, in October. Is that a fair characterization of what happened? That's fair, and it's not just the minister. It's PCO and the Department of Justice, because, again, there were implications immediately when the investigation started in March because these were PCO appointees. Who in, who in PCO and Justice was it involved in this corrupt editing process along with the ministry? ADMs. ADM Noseworthy? Uh, no, he wasn't involved in any investigation because he was implicated. What I meant was ADMs and people of that level as counterparts to the people at ISED were involved from day one. Uh, would you would would it be fair to characterize that the conduct of the minister was corrupt? Yeah, I mean, De embarrassing at minimum, deceitful. Yeah. You also said uh, last year and today that there was a consensus amongst bureaucrats, and I said that the board needed to go, uh, but that changed when the minister intervened. Why did Minister Champagne go against the advice of his officials and politically interfere to keep the SDTC board, the conflicted board that had doled out hundreds of millions of dollars improperly, to keep that board in place? Why? 
because I think that the current government is more interested in protecting themselves and protecting the situation being a public nightmare and they would rather protect wrongdoers and financial mismanagement than have to deal with a situation like SDDC in the public sphere.